I love a good conspiracy theory and my favorite ones are the ones that are true. And this is a crazy email leaked from the Fed. I'm gonna go over this video that was covering this. And also, how does that affect us? Because at the end of the day, looking at some of these things like CPI and inflation, what that really matters is how does that affect interest rates? We have credit cards, car loans, and if you're watching this video, you're probably either helping people buy homes or thinking of buying a home. And obviously interest rates, you know, so goes the rates, so goes the markets. And so we want to look at how those things are being impacted, especially if there's any kind of, you know, craziness going on with the way they're calculating uh, calculating these numbers. Hey everyone, this is Race Robinson, your favorite Florida mortgage broker. And this is a reaction to a video. I'm not going to play the actual video, but this is a video from me, Kevin. He's a kind of day trader that does a lot of analysis on the stock market, but he covers the house, uh, housing market quite a bit too. And he did this video, he's got a couple million subscribers. Wow, government admits it rigs inflation data leaked email. And what is he saying in this video? He's going to discuss, and um, I'll link into the uh, comments kind of the whole video, but I'm gonna give you the very simplistic version, which is all we really care about is that when the Fed measures CPI, sorry, when the Bureau of Labor Statistics measures CPI, which is one of the Fed's main numbers they're looking at for inflation, that is a big impact on what's going to happen with rates. A big part of that is rent equivalency. What are people paying for rents? Because we think about it, a big part of what people's monthly expenses are is on housing. Now, it is already insane the way they measure this. They literally measure rent equivalency by calling or doing surveys to people. So it'd be like if I called you and said, what do you think you'd rent your house out for? And you'd say, I don't know. I mean, my neighbor's renting their house for 3,000 and mine's nicer than his, so probably 3,200. Okay, rent in that area is 3,200. That is literally how they do it. So it is crazy. So they are asking the same questions over and over, probably asking it a particular way, but still it is very, very people's opinions on what rent is. Now that's a kind of a simplified version, but you can see it's not really that analytical of a way to measure rent. This is a rent inflation metrics diversion in the US CPI. And this is one of the big things that happened is we were expecting CPI to be lower and it actually got this hotter reading, but this, so the blue is actual rents and you can see it does actually correlate with rent equivalency quite a bit, right? But then look last month, it, the, the actual rents, meaning continuing to go down while rent equivalency, meaning the survey that they did went up, which is caused a lot of people that are in the day trading market and obviously investors to say, what the heck happened? Why is it changing like that? Because that was not what was expected and they can see that the data doesn't make sense. Just to kind of bring that point home a little more, this right here is a measure of all these different indices that measure rent, right? What's going on with rent? This red one is rent equivalency. And look at all of these other ones, all going down, all saying rent is going down. Look at this uh, new tenant repeat repeat index saying it's negative five. So what happens is this, if you're renting a single family home, I have single family homes, the people are in longer leases, one, let's say a one year lease. If rents go down, most of those landlords typically are not going to react as rents go down very quickly, right? And usually what'll happen is they just won't raise the rent and most tenants will not move because if they drop their, if they can go drop their rent $300 a month, it's a big expense to go put a deposit down and do all that. So rent equivalency is always going to be lagging, but it depends on how you weight it. Meaning if you look at say apartment complexes, another extreme example, they're turning over leases all the time. And so if you really wanted to know what was going on with rent, you wouldn't want to target single family homes, which move slower. You would want to look at the types of properties, multi-unit properties that actually have a lot of turnover. So you can see in real time rents fall, right? So it makes it less lagging. But the more important thing is what the Fed, or sorry, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the Fed reads that information is they think of it. So this is a good analogy. Think of it as a scale. If you weigh yourself in your bathroom every morning, and then you come over to my house and weigh yourself on my scale, makes no difference because all that matters is did your weight go up or down but you want to use the same scale what the market figured out is that something must have changed the fed somehow skewed the data and when it turns out when they looked at what they did is they changed the way they weighted 
the multi-unit properties versus the single family homes. And again, why that's important is you need to measure it on the same scale. Otherwise the data is worthless because you can just basically make the data do what you want, which is exactly what happened from December uh, to January of this year. In one month, if they change the scale, if I go into your bathroom and change the scale, well now all of a sudden we're gonna get a different reading. And that's what they did. And that is, you know, for lack of better words, kind of BS because if you're looking at this data and I'm trying to figure out if I'm losing weight, if somebody sneaks and changes the scale and doesn't tell me, now I'm looking at a whole different metrics and I don't know. So what did the Bureau of Labor Statistics say when they actually got busted? Good afternoon. The weights for fa uh, single family detached homes increased materially, materially from December, 2023 to, this, to January, 2024. All of you searching for the source of the divergent have found it. No additional information related to this request will be disseminated. Basically mean, yeah, you busted us. We did change the scale. Sorry, we're not gonna give you any more information. But why would they? I don't know. I mean, there's a lots of uh, conspiracies out there. You know, why would they wanna make inflation seem higher than it is? Because if rents are falling, which is what the actual reality is, that's the measure you want in CPI because that's the way they've been measuring it. All that to say is that CPI and all these indices can be manipulated. That's just the nature of any data. But how do we use this and why is it important? Well, one reason is mortgage rates hit a two month high this week, uh, according to March 2024, 2024 forecast. And look at here at 30 year fixed rates. We got all the way to eight. We dropped all the way to um, you know mid sixes. Got this run back up. Looked like we were headed in the right direction, mid sixes then all the way back over 7%. So these indices is what the Fed is using to make their determination on the Fed funds rate. And at the end of the day, manipulating those numbers gives the Fed the wrong information. And then they do stuff based on what is not the actual measure that they've been doing the whole time. So does the Fed know this? Probably. Why would they do it? I have no idea. Their thing is, yeah, we, we did do that, but we're not gonna tell you why. But a lot of people are kind of upset about it, especially if that's what you do. There's people that actually trade bonds and all these things, and these things affect the market real time. What can we do about this? Look, the market, regardless of what happened last month with CPI, rates are gonna be lower. I did this seminar this week where I basically did, I'm a, I'm a admittedly science fiction nerd, where I was showing this poster of Return of the Jedi, and I kind of, as a, Way to remember it, I did this new version of Return of the Jedi called Return of the Buyer. Meaning in 2024, rates are gonna be lower, appreciation is gonna go up, transactions are gonna go up, there's gonna be a lot more people in the market. And look, regardless of what the market's doing, um, and look, I understand the market makes a difference. It's obviously easier to you know row downstream than it is to row upstream. But the truth is sometimes when you're rowing upstream, it actually makes it a little nicer because you know some of the boats get washed out of the water, which has definitely happened in the real estate and mortgage industry. So what I say is forget about the data, create your own personal success. I wanted to show this because information comes out about rates and markets and all this, and I love looking at that. But what I always say to myself, my team, any of the agents I work with, or if you're buying a house, housing market is undefeated for building wealth as a homeowner. And if you're in the industry, it's also undefeated, in my opinion, for creating wealth for people that are selling, buying and selling homes and also helping people buy and sell homes because literally the real estate market will always be there. And even when you look at these stats from 2008 where the market really dipped, in just four or five years, the market had came back. And now we're expecting more appreciation, lower rates. So focus on a daily success plan. If you're in the business, what do you need to do to be successful? If you're looking for a bigger net, meaning you wanna work with more buyers in 2024, we understand all the programs, how to use them, how to take buyers that maybe can't get approved somewhere else, and get them where they can buy a home in 2024. Anyways, I thought that was really interesting. Again, I love a good conspiracy theory, but especially when they're true. If you have any questions on this or anything else, uh, reach out to me, I'd love to help. This is Race Robinson, your favorite Florida mortgage broker. Have a great day, great week. Talk to you soon.